Hello and welcome everyone to the Buddhist Recovery Network Academy. I'm Susanna joining you from Helsinki, Finland, and I will be your host today. I'm a big fan of Buddhism, recovery, and of course, Buddhist recovery. I facilitate both eight-step recovery meetings and mindfulness-based addiction recovery courses here in Finland. And I'm a member of the board of the Buddhist Recovery Network. Today, we have an academy teaching offered by Mary Stankavich. And uh, I start to think like, uh, maybe it's like, it's even uh, 10 years ago or something when I first heard Mary teach, you were teaching here in Finland and uh, we've known each other from ever since. So it's a very special occasion for me today. And uh, today's teaching is called All You Need Is Love. I will tell you a little bit more about Mary and the teaching in just a moment. And I just want to thank everybody for being here today and being part of our community. All of our teachings are given freely and we are blessed with some amazing teachers who have experience on the cushion, experience working with body, speech and mind, experience in, in the ongoing practice of recovery by the way of Dharma. As we practice the Buddha's teaching of generosity, we invite you to give Dana. Dana will help will be given to support our ongoing Buddhist Recovery Network meetings and so support our teacher as well. You can give on a one-time or recurring basis using the link posted in the chat field by our tech who is uh, Vince today. So thank you Vince for posting that and serving us. Uh, please be sure to indicate that your donation is for the Academy and we sincerely thank you for your generosity. And if you just miss uh, writing there that it's for the Academy, all the donations that come during the uh, Academy sessions are directed to the Academy. So now to the main point why we are here, I would like to introduce our guest teacher, Mary, Mary Stan Kavich. Uh, has practiced meditation, yoga, and cultivated a spiritual practice for over 30 years, and in 2009 was empowered to teach Buddha Dharma. Mary is based in the Los Angeles area and teaches classes, retreats, and does individual mentoring. She has taught mindfulness at recovery centers, has co-facilitated year to live groups in, since 2008, and has had a weekly Dharma class for over a decade. She also was uh, director of Against the Stream Buddhist Meditation Society for 10 years. Mary completed the Buddhist uh, chaplaincy program at the Sadi Center and served as a volunteer chaplain at Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center. She also served as executive director of the Mind Body Awareness Project from 2016 to 2018. In taking the practice of the cushion, Mary is honored to serve on the board of CU, CLUE, Clergy and Lady United for Econo Economic Justice. Along with teaching, she continues to investigate what it means to live with an un undefended heart. She is committed to relevancy in her teaching and talks often on social justice issues and currently co-facilitates a women and wit witnesses group. Fun fact, Mary has a master's degree from UCLA and worked as an archeologist in Syria. And more information from Mary's website that I will post to the chat right now. And then I will say a few words um, about the teaching. So like said before, the topic of today's teaching is all you need is love. And this is what Mary says about it. In our world, it seems that hate and anger are so prevalent, it can feel, feel overwhelming at times. In our own lives, 
it's also quite easy for us to slip into aversion and othering while finding it fully justified. In this talk, Mary discusses the need to name love as the foundation of our practice. The Buddha gave us the Metta Sutta and as well as other teachings on how to be with a mind imbued with loving kindness and compassion. This foundation of love will allow us to fully open to the world and to ourselves, letting go of the need to create barriers. Turning towards love is the answer. I get goosebumps when I read this. So welcome, Mary. And it's always a pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, the screen is all yours. Thank you so much, Susanna. I really appreciate uh, that introduction. It's always weird to hear you talked about, not you, me, when somebody reads what my I've written about myself, my bio. But I recommend it to anybody who wants to write down your, it's like when you do a resume and you, you, you go, I haven't done much that much. And then you write it down and you go, oh, maybe I have. So it's a good exercise. Um, so, and thank you everyone for being here. I love being a uh, part of this academy. I've been, I was involved with the Buddhist Recovery Network from almost the beginning, many, 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 many years ago. And um, I'm so happy to see how it's still thriving and that I get to participate in this uh, uh, at least once a year. So thank you for always inviting me. I, I deeply appreciate it. So, um, We'll have some meditation now. We'll have about 15 minutes, a little, maybe a little bit longer of meditation. And because the topic is all you need is love, I want to invite everyone to move into this, um, this practice today with a softness, with an intention to be kind to yourselves, to be kind to yourselves and to be gentle with the experiences that show up. We can sometimes get up into a place of thinking I, it should be a certain way. And I'm a big fan of getting rid of that word should because it can cause a lot of um, struggle and issues and, and is really unnecessary much of the time. So I'm, that's what I'm going to offer in, in, um, in my in, um, instructions during the sit not not a lot of instructions but just a, a reminder hopefully that you're 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 greeting this moment this practice with gentleness so find your seat as we move into our practice take a few moments to settle down to settle in let yourself arrive you may have been sitting for some time already but really bring your attention to the experience of sitting, whether you perhaps you're on a sofa, on a chair, on a cushion, perhaps you're lying down, perhaps you're standing, whatever posture you're in, let yourself move into an awareness of that, being supported by the ground, allow yourself to relax. Allow the body to soften, releasing those places that are tight or tense. Taking a moment or two to go through the body to relax. Relaxing around the face or the jaw. Relax your shoulders, your arms your hands, relaxing as much as you can in your torso, your belly, your chest, your back, softening, relax your hips, your legs, your feet, this body can tighten and contract against 
experience against thoughts and we're not even aware so this intentional softening is so helpful and allow the mind to relax as well releasing all those shoulds releasing any responsibilities releasing any plans or memories let yourself open in gentle awareness to right here right now nothing to do there's nowhere to go allow yourself to just be As you begin to sink into this present time awareness, let there be a friendliness towards your experience. It's not supposed to be different from what it is, yet we can get so caught up in idea of it's supposed to be a certain way see if you can let any of that go just greet what's right here perhaps it's as simple as the in-breath and the out-breath perhaps it's some sensations in the body Perhaps there's an emotion that's present. Perhaps you notice a mood of the mind. The experience, the sensations may be pleasant or unpleasant. They may be comfortable or uncomfortable. Can you just be with whatever shows up, whatever's here? Greeting each moment with kindness, gentleness.
the mind will undoubtedly wander. And when you notice you've drifted into the future, the past, a story, gently, really, gently release the story, the plan, the memory without judgment and open back into awareness of what's right here. There be a softness to the practice, a gentleness to recognize the mind wandering and bringing it back. Staying relaxed in the body, relaxed in the mind. No need to strive in this practice. No getting it right. You're simply being present and noticing when you've drifted, gently returning, resting in gentle awareness all the comings and goings.
allowing yourself to rest gently right here with whatever is present discomfort in the body an uncomfortable feeling a pleasant thought releasing any preference for something different letting yourself greet the moment with friendliness kindness and softness As we move into the last few moments of our practice, I invite you to spend a moment in gratitude if you like. Just thinking of one thing in your life you're grateful for and resting with that for a moment. Thank you, everyone. Any questions or comments before I begin? Okay. Maybe I could ask. Maybe maybe I could ask you about a term that you use: this uh, gentle awareness. Would you please tell a little bit more about it? Yeah, I find it, um, I, I just started using it maybe, maybe a, I don't know, a while ago, several months at least, maybe a year ago. I think it's this, again, it's this um, invitation to soften. And so it's not any different from awareness, but it perhaps creates a, a, an, a, an idea in the mind that it's gentle. It lets go of any judging. Um, let's go of any critical voice. It's just gentle. Okay, right now it's like this. Right now it's like this. So, somehow they're screen sharing here. Did that, did that help, Susanna? 
Yeah, yeah. The screen oh. share oh. was interesting. I, I didn't know that it's possible. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, thank you. I also just, uh, I got a note that said my bandwidth is low. Um, so if there's any trouble hearing me, please let me know and I'll just turn my video off to save the bandwidth. Any Anything else? Okay. So as Susanna mentioned, um, the title for this talk is All You Need Is Love. And it, it's something I, I came up with a few months ago, a talk I gave a few months ago, because it seems like there was one week where every every lesson I saw, you know, how people post quotes from teachers on Facebook and on other social media, and so much of it was in, an invitation to greeting the world with love or the importance of love. I mean, it even came down to hearing that Beatles song on the radio, All You Need Is Love, which is where, of course, I got the title for this talk from. And um, I think it was, it really landed in with me when I heard all that, because I think it's an important thing to remember, especially today, when it's so easy to only see the anger and the hatred and everything that's going on, the violence and, and the, the awfulness that's happening in the world today and in all, mm, mm, countries all around the world. And you know what it is. I don't have to name it. it it's just there. And um, it's not just, you know, oh, them, they're so, they're so awful and, and hating. It's, it's, as simple and, it's as simple as with sports teams. You know, I grew up um, a sports fan of uh, a, my local team, and we were supposed to hate the team from the other city. I mean, it just was a given. And so it was, I hated the team. I didn't like the fans. I didn't like the city. And it's just because that's the way it was. And we did that. I did that without even thinking about it. And so what that does is it gives hatred and animosity, an opportunity, opportunity to move in and, and just be there. Um, and it becomes a little bit more normal and it's easier to um, rationalize them. Um, they talk about othering. We create an other, which we then demean and it becomes much more easy to dehumanize or do whatever it is we, we get to do with them. And it's extraordinary how simple it can be. I mean, it, we can create an other out of anything. You know, they wear really strange shoes. What's wrong with them? And, or however we do it. And so it's, um, it's extraordinary. And, that hatred that we internalize um, doesn't do harm unless we ex move towards it, um, uh, unless we do something, take action, you know, some kind of violence or cause harm in some way. But there's this internal um, carrying this, this, this really unwholesome, the Buddha would say, unwholesome, unskillful emotion that we kind of allow and say yeah it has a place but then you get into these teachings um you realize that it's really not a, a good place to reside in fact the buddha talks about it as one of the three poisons there's there's hatred there's uh, hatred aversion ill will um along with greed and craving and, and delusion or ignorance and so these are the things that cause suffering these are the things that get in the way of our liberation of our freedom and so to take that to heart and say okay what is the antidote and the antidote is love the antidote is 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 kindness the antidote is compassion i was on a retreat last week with gil fransdahl and bruni davila and he talked about a lot about compassion he talked a lot about this caring 
Um, and you can't have this caring and compassion if you're also carrying this, this uh, um, anger, uh, hatred, ill will towards something else. And um, as people in recovery, uh, additionally, people with addictions, there is so much self-loathing that goes on. You know, this hatred of our own experience, this hatred of who we are or what we do. I know I was totally in there. The idea of loving myself was like, no, that ain't going to happen. Because here, let me give you a list of why I'm unlovable. Let me give you a list of why I'm really an awful person and all the horrible things I do. Some, you know, most of which are in my own mind, just the stories we create or we internalize these things that people have told us, you know, you're this or you're not this or you're never going to be this and you're always that. And we just, it's just this real negative thing. And oftentimes we use and or practice our addiction in order to cover that up in order to to numb that but that self-loathing at least in my case was still there so this idea of releasing the hatred is so important especially as we we move through recovery it's incredibly important and i know it took me a long time and it was really when i came to practice that i was able to turn towards that part of myself turn towards that stuff I just was unwilling to look at. And in the book, um, Love and Rage by Lama Rod Owens, he said that anger and rage cover up, often cover up trauma and heartbreak and fear and so many things. And it's it takes work to turn towards that. And we can't just like turn towards it because a lot of times Suzanne and I were talking briefly um, before before uh, the group started. And, you know, a lot of times I came through 12 step and a lot of that is just bear down, bear down, bear down, at least how I heard it and what I how I received. And it's just like bear down, bear down. And and um, there wasn't a way for me to bear down that was I couldn't find the kindness in it. I couldn't find the gentleness in it. Not I don't even think I was looking for it, but it it just it just wasn't brought to my attention wholeheartedly. And then I hit these teachings, these Buddhist teachings, and I said, okay. If that's what you say it's supposed to be, I guess I'm willing to just maybe turn towards this idea of um, loving kindness, of metta. And, you know, uh, the Buddha gave us so many teachings about greeting the world with kindness and love. Um, there's the Metta Sutta, which I'm sure you're, you're mo most of you are familiar with, where the Buddha says we, we, tr we greet the world with uh, loving kindness. We don't do anything that would be reproved, that would be um, thought poorly of. You know, we don't cause harm. And we do this to everyone, omitting none. That's one of my favorite phrases, omitting none, which it means me. You know, if you if you struggle from this really this self-loathing or this challenging experience uh, relating to yourself, that's part of it. Omitting none. Um, you know, uh, so this this bringing to awareness of the idea of love. Sometimes that's how it starts. It's just like, okay, there's this teaching about loving kindness. There's this teaching about compassion. There's this teaching about joy, equanimity, the heart practices, the Brahma Viharas. And sometimes it feels like it's so far away. Just even allowing it into your consciousness as a, as a place to work towards is how you begin is that's how you start. Because I remember the idea of compassion for self. I could, you know, I would much rather have compassion for people I didn't like than compassion for myself. Because it was so challenging. Because it was scary. 
you know, as, as, as Lama Raj said, it covers up so many things, but we have to be willing to turn towards those things that scare us. And not in a, okay, I'm going to do this because this is what I'm supposed to do way, but really coming from a place of tenderness, coming from a place of caring. There's a, last week at the, at the retreat, Gil Francel told a story. It was from one of the suttas that after the Buddha was enlightened, he, um, he had some students who became enlightened as well, so the first 60 arahants. I have it here, a note on it. And he said, um, he told the first 60 arahants to go forth and care for the well being of others and for the world. So, this is the Buddha's invitation to care for the well being of others. And we, and omitting none, we have to care for our own well-being. These ideas that have been ingrained with us that we're not good enough, we're not um, smart enough, we're, we're not lovable, we haven't accomplished enough, we're, we're um, all those old stories, that old conditioning that we, we, we learn from, our families that we learn from, our neighborhoods that we learn from, society, oftentimes society tells us we're not enough and we'll never be enough and we don't fit in. All those ideas are what keep us with this negative experience towards ourselves, this anger, this hatred, this rage, this disgust, all these things. We feel it towards ourselves, we feel it towards others. And the invitation is to begin to disentangle from those stories, disentangle from those beliefs that just came upon us. And it means facing some challenging things. Um, Mushin Patricia Akeda, who is a, a lovely teacher, she said, um, for those of us with a spiritual path and a set of practices who are willing to leave the home of comfortable assumptions, these ideas that we've carried with us, we now have a choice to say yes to the virus pandemic and yes to economic collapse, yes to mass extinction of flora and fauna, yes to the threats of fascism, and yes to giving up the urgent need to know and control. But Bell Hook says the, it means yes. We say yes to everything. The things that we've been hiding from, that anger, that rage, is a wall that we defend ourselves against. But instead, we have to say yes to these things. And Bell Hook says, the moment we choose to love, we begin to move against domination, against oppression. The moment we choose to love, we begin to move towards freedom, to act in ways that liberate ourselves and others. That action is the testimony of love as the practice of freedom. And to be, this is the hard part, to be loving is to be open to grief, to be touched by sorrow, even sorrow that is unending. No, we have to be willing to turn towards the 10,000 sorrows just as we crave those 10,000 joys because it's not one or the other. It's this complexity of the human condition there's this ebb and this flow. And how do we hold it? We hold it with kindness. We hold it with compassion. We hold it with joy because there are fun things in life. I have two fluffy cats that I love. They're not really fluffy, but I have two silly cats that are just bring me so much joy. Open to that. You can't say, no, I'm not allowed to feel this because there's that terrible thing happening. We greet what is present in our lives. And we greet it with gentleness. We greet it with kindness. Lama Rod again says, love will open the door to mourning, to grieving. And love says, this is yours to experience. If you bypass this experience, you will suffer more. I suffered from stuffing down the unpleasant stuffing down those those hard things that I didn't want to feel. That's why I, I used all the things I used to not feel, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. 
it ended up miserable. And this willingness to sit with the uncomfortable is, is the path to freedom, but we do it with gentleness, with kindness, with love. In many, many suttas, the Buddha talks about sitting with a mind imbued one quarter kindness, loving kindness and, and compassion and joy and equanimity. We sit imbued with this. It's how we greet the world. Wise intention in the Eightfold Path says we greet the world with goodwill, with caring, with friendliness, with compassion. So the Buddha has said it innumerable, numerous times. It's what we, um, it's the path towards freedom. This, this willingness to be intimate with our deepest experience without preference. That's equanimity. That's an undefended heart. That's what we, we, we um, aspire to. And recognizing it's not easy, recognizing we start where we are and we do the best we can with what we have in this moment. Perhaps even letting it into our mind as an idea of saying, you know what, that sounds okay. Let me see what that looks like. And then just set an intention to walk in that direction. It takes, it takes a long time. It takes a long time, but the, the tools are there. The, the heart practices, you know, the practicing, um, um, mudita for the good fortune of others. That's challenging, but that allows us to, to drop that, that hatred we have for others. Practicing kindness and compassion for ourselves. When you find yourself um, calling yourself those names that are can just be there, be willing to say no. Be willing to say no. And I realized I have um, talked a lot, and um, I hope that this has been of some help. But I invite you to find a way to uh, bring this this practice of of love of kindness, of compassion into your, into your daily life. Gil on retreat last week, he said, greet each moment with kindness, with compassion, with friendliness. So as I go through the day, it's shifting. And I was like, oh, I got to do the dishes. And it's like, oh, what would it be like if I shifted my perspective to say, hi, okay, I'm doing this now. Still may be a chore, but it's all about shifting how we see things, clearing, clearing the dust from our eyes. So thank you, my friends. Um, A few words about the Dana. Your generosity can help to strengthen the recovery community and the Crowdy Academy and can be a practical expression of gratitude and metta. We invite you to practice generosity and to give Dana in support of these teachings to be shared with our teacher and with the Buddhist Recovery Network. This link uh, in the chat that, that was posted there will take you to the BRN website. And please, if you remember, please indicate that your gift is for the Academy. And then we have uh, in the chat link for the podcasts and uh, videos. And the next event that we have is going to be on the Sunday, uh, March the fifth with Gary Sanders and uh, then we have a Facebook group link of that is going to be in the chat as well and there is also a weekly Buddhist recovery network meeting and uh, the the uh, type of meeting change weekly you can check them from the website and uh, yes I want to thank again Mary for the teaching Sadhu, it was good. <laughs> it was so useful. And thank you for joining us today. May the merit we have gained go to the alleviation of the suffering of all beings. May we all be happy. May we all be peaceful. May we all be safe. And remember to include yourself also to all beings. And the room is going to be open for a few moments. So if you want to, uh, you know, 
send your thanks to Mary or, you know, copy links from the chat. Like five minutes or something, we are going to be open. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone.